Hey guys, welcome back to another Skylanders Ring of Heroes video. Now in today's video, we're gonna be covering some news related to global release. But before we start, there is no official global release yet. So if that's what you're looking for in this one, it's not here, I'm sorry. I will make a video as soon as I do hear the official global release. But they have made a fa Facebook page um, addressing some concerns about it. So we'll go through this. Um, firstly, over the weekend, there was a post made on Reddit by an account called Comtours that was say saying something about a February release. Now, I don't believe that is the official Comtours, so this may be in response to that, everyone's looking at that and then asking all the questions. So this is their sort of Q&A, answering some questions. So here we go, we'll, ju we'll jump into it. I'll sort of paraphrase and summarize what's in here. So they're just saying that they're still working hard on global, they wanna get it done. Uh, they don't have a date yet, but the game's still in production and on its way to more regions. So uh, the questions here, the, the darker ones we have the questions. So when global release does occur, will there be one or multiple servers? As far as servers are concerned, we are investigating different options. We want to make sure that we have the best solution for all players. We will definitely update everyone as soon as plans are fixed. So they have the option to do multiple or single server. They're not sure what they're doing yet um, and they'll let us know. Speaking of servers, will newcomers be on the same server as the players from Australia, New Zealand, and Canada? Basically a repeat, they have the option to do both, but they'll be sure to address any issues concerning newcomers catching up to players that have already been playing. We'll talk a bit, so we'll go through the rest of this list, and then I wanna talk a bit about um, just sort of the, the whole discussion on new players coming and catching up and all that sort of thing, because I don't think it will be too bad. I know it sounds weird coming from someone who's already playing and ahead, so I just wanna have a discussion about that as well, but we'll go through the rest of this. Uh, many users are concerned uh, about the aspect of being left behind competitive progress. Will there be any kind of incentives available for users outside of the three countries. Uh, new events and new content are already being prepared just for this reason. We actually, we're actually planning events that specifically target new coming users to help them get all settled in. So I really didn't read that specifically how it was written. <laughs> I was making it up as I went. But basically that's saying that they're planning events for the people to catch up. And the fact that they're planning events to make people catch up when they've said they can either split servers or not split servers. So if they were splitting servers, I feel like they wouldn't need the catch up mechanics. So that makes me lean towards the idea of not one global server, but maybe the same as Summoner's War, which could be uh, global Europe and Asia, but we don't know. But the fact that they're planning these sorts of things makes me think that there will be a merger of some sort in the servers. Um, why has the game been taking so long to be released? What sort of roadblocks um, are the team, are the devs facing? And this one, I really like this one because they give some features that they're working on and all that sort of thing. So uh, they're constantly adapting to new feedback and ideas. And I, I can attest to this, there has been, like I've been giving a lot of feedback too. Um, there's a lot of like little bugs, um, things that I feel like could be adjusted and stuff like that. So people have been giving feedback a lot. And um, so I think they would be doing a lot of tweaking along with the feedback, but who knows what they'll end up doing. Uh, the game is being tweaked and improved all the time. Uh, to give you a hint at the new content they've been working on. Um, so that's awesome. They've given us some new content. So there's the Cavern of Gold dungeon that's already in the game. So I don't know if this was like, just needed to be edited out or whether they're changing it a bit. Uh, then we got the the one the, the two that I'm really 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 excited about. These are the two. This is the feature that I was most hyped about about this game. I think the competitive aspect will be amazing, and they're working on friendly matches in duels and real time PvP in arena. So that is awesome in itself. Um, and they're also working on guild raids, um, and it just says are all being implemented and highly concerned. Uh, considered so i don't know if that means that they're definitely being in implemented with the global release or whether they're all being considered as something to be implemented with global release and then the others will be released later down the track but nonetheless we've got real-time pvp that they're talking about coming soon so i'm hyped about that uh below are a few other things that we're working on so this is really promising too. Improve the way characters are powered up. At the moment, it's really hard to power up units that aren't natural, like that aren't fully farmable in scenarios. Um, and it's really, really, really expensive in gold. So I don't know what they have planned for that. Um, I'm really hoping that it's gonna be something that 
improves the way you can power up nat, uh, nat fours and fives because nat fives are still kind of useful at the moment because they're just really strong kids, good leader skills, all that sort of thing. So nat fives are still pretty good, even though you can't really do anything with them past five star basically, unless you're massive pay to play. Um, but nat fours are in a really weird place where some of them look nice, but they're capped at four star unless you are heavy pay to play and buy a bunch of shards. So it'd be nice to see a way that you can actually work on your favorite units that you've actually summoned and power them up without that roadblock of, well, they're not farmable, I can't do anything with them. So it'll be interesting to see what they do. Also, I definitely think if they reduce the price of powering up, it would help a lot, a lot, a lot. Just just the quality of life with, uh, with gold for powering up rooms and all that sort of thing. Um, dungeon balances. Okay, dungeon balances is one we can look at both ways. So I actually really love the challenge of this, the progression in this game. I'm currently working on a team to three star B9. I've decided the B10 is completely out of my reach. So I'm gonna try and farm B9, get some better runes, and then have a crack at B10. Because at the moment, B10, the waves are fine. The boss is fine until he does his revenge. So the boss, like I can survive his normal skills, no worries. like really 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 easy um as soon as you get to that 10 attacks and he does his revenge hit it just one shots everything like i don't know whether the scaling on that's wrong or whether that's the way they intended it but at the moment it's a bit of a brick wall so that's why i'm going back to b9 to farm some runes to be able to hopefully survive that boss's hit um and then get through it Obviously, if they don't change anything with it, I will I, I will get there. I'll get there free to play or with a free to play team um, and we will get it done. But if they do make a change, I think it might be in relation to that revenge of the boss on B10 because it is insane. Like it, it is crazy strong. But that's a topic for another video when I when I talk a bit about B10 and the ideas behind clearing it and stuff like that because yeah, I'm, I'm not going to get there anytime real soon. Um, Improvements with the acquisition of soul stones. This is another great one. This leading along with what I was talking about earlier about nat fours and fives. I really hope this is helping with that. Um, at the moment, it does seem a bit slow to grind all the soul stones for just your nat ones, twos and threes that you can farm. However, because I'm farming gold all the time at the same time, I'm farming wish stones, I'm farming experience, it doesn't bother me how slow it is, but I know a lot of people do think it is really slow and I, I wouldn't be against that being sped up, but I'm really hoping that the acquisition of soul stones is related to natural four and five star units because it would be great. And also non-farmable three stars. Um, just, just so you can work on those units you've summoned and you can actually try and power them up without just going, I can't do it because I can't farm them anywhere. So that would be awesome. Um, making reward info clear and more concise. Uh, that might be just related to the one under it, which is drop rate insights. Um, I don't know, it, sound, it doesn't sound like a massive one, I don't think. Um, I just think it's that they're making the info more clear on what you can get. Maybe it might be to do with uh, runes in the dungeon because I've noticed on like, b8 i can only get gray or green six star runes so it might be something to do with that don't know um yeah obviously the better drop rate insights the ui fix uh fixes and um i guess adjustments and then skylander skill animation improvements i have noticed that sometimes they during an animation they bug in the screen and end up somewhere else might be related to that uh rune menu improvements which is always good uh, the room menu is pretty nice it'd be cool if you could do the um same sort of thing as in Summoner's War, if anyone's played, just the uh, where you can preview runes before you actually equip them. That would be awesome. And then they got bug fixes. Um, and then along with more game guides and stuff like that, and then they basically just summarize and say, they're talking about um, communication. So they're gonna update with community dev notes, which is basically just longhand summaries of what they're up to and all that sort of thing. So, and then they thank you for reading it anyway. Back up to here, so this is where I wanna talk about uh, newcomers versus old players because I think it's a really interesting one where if they're planning events that only newcomers get, they're looking at improving the way they're powered up um, and dungeon balances and the acquisition of soul stones. Those things together make me think that is not gonna take long at all to catch up. So at the moment, free to play, 
I feel like you can get to farming B8. I'll, I'll eventually make an alt account. I'll probably wait for the release to see what changes and how early progression has changed. But I, I feel like at the moment, you could get to farming B8 if you play a lot during the day for a week. Um, you could, yeah, in a week you could get to B8, I reckon, farming B8. So that in itself is not a long gap when you consider that a lot of people in the game at the moment are stuck at B8. Um, I don't know if anyone's farming. There might be a couple farming at three star B9, um, but not many that I've seen, or not any that I've seen, but I've heard some people say that some are. Um, and I don't think anyone's doing B10 at the moment. I know the, the info in the game says that someone's doing it with a star cast. I honestly don't think that's real. Uh, that just doesn't make sense to me. And they would be dominating everyone in arena. And I don't see that one dominant person up top. So that, that's, that's not here nor there. So the basic, the basic idea behind it is a week to get up to where everyone is pretty much at, at the moment, obviously the longer it takes to release the, the bit further it's going to be, but a week to get to farming B8, you spend a, a not even a week. I spent, I think I only spent about three or four days farming runes. And then I went back to scenarios to farm units. So, you know, you spend a few days farming some runes and then you basically where everyone else is. So everyone's at that sort of stagnant stage where we're all trying to work on different units to find out what will work to progress us further. But if you've got that combined with um, your improved way to power up, so you might be able to work on other units that'll get you there quicker. Um, if the cost is reduced, you're gonna have more resources. Uh, the dungeon balances, obviously, if they do balance out something in that B10, like I was talking about, you'll sort of catch up quicker to everyone else doing B10. Um, the Soulstone acquisition, once again, in line with that power up thing, if you can you get your units up there quicker because it's easy to get the Soulstones, fantastic. But the big one for me is that um, a lot of people at the moment, free to play, pay to play, obviously not, but free to play players are hitting that brick wall of running out of crit, uh, the free gems. Um, now I've used like 36,000 gems, I think at the moment in the game. And um, I'm, I'm coming to an end. I've sort of been paying a bit just to get the daily packs to keep my, my gem reserves. But um, yeah, people are running out of gems, which means they can't play as much. They can't grind as hard as they have been. And if everything's made a little bit more efficient for the new players, um, where everyone's stuck at now, which is sort of that B8 stage, and then they're running out of gems, if the newcomers can then get to B10 before they run out of gems, it's sort of gonna really even out the balance. But we'll have to wait and see what happens. I think it's gonna be really interesting. Um, whatever happens does happen and we'll make the most of it. But uh, I definitely do think it's not gonna be as bad as I first thought for newcomers into the game. Uh, early on when progress was really, really, really fast and I was punching through doing the B7s into B8s and it was really, really quick. I thought it was gonna be an issue, but the, the, the difficulty level of B9 and B10 have definitely made it seem that it's not gonna be as hard to catch up, especially if they implement some changes that they're talking about here. So that's a bit, bit of a summary of it. Like I said, that's all my opinions and speculation and all that sort of stuff. The only facts are what were, what's actually written on this page and that, that link will be in the description and um, you can check it out. But thanks for watching another video guys and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Cheers.